and Sparity. They're one of the largest PEOs in the US. In this video, we're going to review the questions you should be asking if you're considering Insperity as your PEO or your HR vendor. We're going to review the sales process, some of their products, and we're going to give you questions on how to evaluate it along the way. So let's go ahead and dive right in. There's a lot to cover. So to start off, I will say Insperity is one of our partners. And as a partner, we take our clients through PEO audits and sometimes they're for people currently using Insperity that want to look elsewhere. Sometimes they are for companies looking at other PEOs and they want to throw Insperity in the mix. We're going to look at this through the lens. We're neutral, right? For our clients, it doesn't really matter if they go with Insperity, they go with a competitor, they're open market, whatever makes the most sense for you, the buyer, that's what makes the most sense. And the goal of this video is for us to give you the tools to be able to make that decision. So. Going into it, um, unlike some of our other reviews of payroll companies and HR solutions, the PEO, I want to preface it with, it's a professional employer organization. That means you're going to not only do payroll with them, you're going to do your benefits, 401k, um, you're going to do workers comp, you'll get HR services. There's a whole host of things that you can get. Now, sure, you can carve out some of those things, but the idea is wrapping it all in one and getting to use the economies of scale that they have. So let's review that. Now, one thing I noticed right away that's jumping out at me is Insperity is known for being a PEO and I don't see the word PEO on here anywhere so far. So that's, that's kind of interesting, right? Um, why? It, because I, perhaps they're looking to go into a different type of brand. When we look at their HR solutions, it says full service HR for small businesses, Fortune 500 level employee benefits, payroll, all the, that stuff has the symptom of a PEO. And then over here, full service HR for middle market, comprehensive HR solution to support fast growing middle market companies. I'm not sure exactly how they're, you know, really categorizing these different classes exactly. Um, we've had companies evaluate Insperity that are a few hundred employees. We know that they have clients that we've looked at before um, that are over a thousand employees. So they can't handle as big a company as you need, um, like really because they're able to scale the processes. What really matters is a couple of things. One, do you like their insurance suite? That's one of the first things when we're looking at a PEO, we think it makes sense to look at the employee benefits because next to there's the admin fees, then there's the employee benefits that the benefits are going to be likely the most costly piece of this entire puzzle. When you're looking at Insperity or a PEO, any, anything like that. I do like that they use UHC um, so far on most of the clients we've ever quoted. UHC has always been their master policy that they've worked with. Um, and one thing that's very unique, specific to Insperity, is their underwriting process is typically a little more comprehensive. So if you are looking at multiple PEOs, you might notice that they ask for loss runs. They have a couple extra forms they want you to sign. They want you to send some declaration pages. There's a lot of different things that they want during that request for proposal stage. I will say I like it. I do like it. I love it when we see a PEO doing the diligence up front. Why? Well, because that tells me that they're not hungry for the business and they just want to get lives on their book. That usually leads to within a year or so a very high renewal or there's potential risk that they're taking on that hasn't been evaluated well. Um, so we do appreciate any of our partners that do spend that kind of time. But if you're in a rush and you really want to get through things, don't be surprised if they slow the process down and say, hey, we want to look at a lot of this information. Part of that is because they do underwrite some of this stuff internally at Insperity. Um, but, you know, I'll defer to the sales process that you go through at that time to dictate how your experience goes with that. But um, look, so let's go into the small business section, sector because we'll assume small group is under 100, could be under 200. Again, they don't really tell us here. But when we're looking at the full suite, you basically are looking at employee benefits, HR admin, risk management and HR related compliance, talent management, HR support, HR technology. Now, 
some of these things seem like a run on sentence, but they do mean something. I do appreciate when companies spend the time to say exactly what it is, like Insperity has done on this site. Some of the companies try to brand their own version of what this means and invite you to a sales conversation so that you can be surprised. Uh, this is pretty like straightforward, right? So let's see what they got to say. On the employee benefits, they say that eligible employees will have access to Fortune 500 benefits. Now, let's take a second and look at eligible employees. So with some of our clients, they might have part-timers that have access to benefits. If you're in small group California, say you're on like, you know, Blue Shield or, a, you know, you, you might have some part-timers work 21 hours a week um, and you offer them benefits still. One of the questions you're going to want to ask when you're in the sales process is if that's the case for you, are you going to be able to do that with Insperity or this PEO? You should ask that with any PEO, but specifically with Insperity, I would say you, you want to ask that. Now, they say medical, dental, vision insurance. Those are typically like the employer sponsored pieces, but they do have a lot of other insurances that they're going to offer too. pretty much everything. Like it says Fortune 500. You're going to feel like you work at, you know, if you're going to basically feel like you work at Insperity or at a publicly traded company or any large company where you would expect to have a 401k, full benefits, wellness plan. Um, I believe they have like gym memberships and all that different type of stuff. Um, you know, but let's check out what they're what they're boasting here. OK. Our wide range of benefit offerings. Okay, so medical dental visions, they say several health benefit offerings to satisfy individual needs, multiple options, nationally recognized carriers, dental and vision coverage of independent of medical. So what that means is um, what I believe it means, and you'll want to ask your, your rep, or if you're working with us, we would just ask the rep for you. You know, hey, can, do, are we talking about if the medical insurance doesn't work out, but everything else looks really good? Can we keep our current medical insurance and go with the PEO solution? Well, you know, it's likely that you may, you may be able to do that. Um, some PEOs allow you to carve out different pieces, but the fact that they took the time to put that language in there, I, I would definitely say it's worth asking. Prescription coverage. Now, I'm glad that they brought this piece up. This is something that, you know, a lot of people use prescriptions. They want to know about co-pays, how the plan designs work. One thing I will say is when our clients are looking at onboarding Insperity or even times I've worked with Insperity reps that, um, you know, in the past or HR business partners that used to work there and then maybe they work somewhere else. Those people have all said like, hey, they they did have a lot of great customer service and a lot of great white glove service. I will say that the service fees are a little bit higher. They're not like um, they're not the cheapest ones on the block. And the reason being is you do have professional services where your team will have access to someone who can explain this to them. Um, also, you know, I find that UHC for national coverage is amazing. A lot of our clients are, you know, maybe based in California, Florida, New York, and they're in 20 different states. When you have people in 20 different states, you want to be mindful of the carrier you choose to pair with because you know, if you have somebody that's in Colorado, you want to know, are, are they going to be covered? What's in network? What's out of network? UHC does a pretty good job of covering um, a lot of the areas that your employees would be in. Um, so I think Insperity did a good job in partnering up with UHC. Um, there is a lot of people who partner with Aetna directly, but you'll want to see what's available to you when you do your quote with Insperity. They'll, they'll give that to you. Yeah. So it's very important when you're looking at a PEO to look at all the things that they're putting together for you. So you when you get medical insurance, you know, if you're a small business, you may not have had to do this before, but you need to put together a Section 125 plan. You need to have a um, you need to have like an ERISA wrap document if you're a certain size. You need to have a, like an overall plan document. You need to have if you want FSA or a flexible spending account. Well, that's something that's pre-tax. So you're going to want to note that in payroll. You're also going to want to make sure, well, where is that money going to? Once it's deducted from the payroll, is it going onto a card? What kind of account is it going into? Who's the bank? Is it Optum? Who is it? These are the questions you want to ask if you're going to do this on your own. And with the PEO, you'll want to know that too. The other thing to note is when you are getting all these benefits, the reason why Insperity is able to administer these benefits on your behalf and take on the liability for administering these benefits on your behalf 
is because you are going to do go into a co-employment relationship, which is what a PEO is. Now, it's not really that scary. They're not going to tell you what you can and can't do. They will ask you to follow all of the federal, state, and local laws that are applicable to your company and your employees, um, because that's what that's what they will do. But ultimately, if you have anything like, say, like an EPLI claim, anything like that, generally you'll want to read their contract. But generally, you're the first uh, you're the first insured. You're, as the insured, you're going to be the uh, the first level. Right. They're going to go through your EPLI policy first. If you don't have one, they would be second. But, you know, again, when you go through that claims process, you're going to want to ask them, hey, how do we go through that claims process? How do we navigate anything? Um, and that includes for workers comp. That includes for medical benefits. Some of these things can get a little bit sticky if you're not used to it. Somebody gets hurt on the job. Um, you know, we've had people where, hey, like, you know, maybe the CNC machinist does something to his finger goes to the emergency room, uses his medical insurance. Well, that's actually not appropriate for him to use his medical insurance. He should use workers' comp. And, you know, one thing Insperity will be able to do is you'll be able to go to your HR business partner, tell them what happened, make the report, get all the information filed and stowed away correctly because they'll want to make sure their stuff is uh, taken care of. And likewise, though, you'll benefit from that. So same thing here, um, FSA, HSA, you look at basic uh, term life and personal accident insurance, employee assistant programs, disability insur insurance, like short term, long term. All these things are important. And the reason why they're so important is if you have, like, say, manager level benefits, right? You, some clients of ours will have one carrier for medical, another for dental, another for vision, another for basic life. Then they'll have voluntary, then they'll have AFLAC, and then they'll have accidental, all these these guys are going to wrap everything up into one thing for you, and it's going to be one consolidated bill. It, it will be line item. It's very clear how they bill. Um, I will say that billing for insperity, not always a strong suit of um, people internally and externally to understand. And the reason why is they bill as a percentage of payroll. Now, when you go through the quoting process, you're going to want to really diligence. How did they arrive at the numbers that they did? Um, the reason why is if you do get a percentage of payroll versus a per employee per month billing fee for admin, you'll want to see what percentage is medical. Is that separated out? What are we paying for basic life? You don't want everything lumped together. You want to see the breakout. And all these things should be broken out in your quote. Insperity's 401k, they can manage you through a MEP. I would say you want to talk to them about their 401k plan, see if it does make sense for you. You want to see if you can also potentially um, carve it out. One thing it does say is Insperity's 401k plan is an additional cost, right? That's not uncommon. I don't think that that's unfair. Um, if you're able to lower your admin fees for most people who don't want to move their 401k, um, because moving a 401k does have some certain implications. You got blackout periods. You've got times when... The 401k, some of the funds may not be available for reporting for the employees to see. Um, you might have to go through a whole process where you're, you're not really sure, hey, who's the fiduciary here? Or is it you? Is it insperity? We don't want to move the stuff. The other thing is with the PEO, unless it really makes sense for you, I think having your own 401k does make sense because then it's portable. Um, yeah, you'll manually have to do some admin, but... Insperity, I'm sure, can walk you through how they can give you a custom report and you can still keep your 401k. Um, again, you want to look at it. If your 401k is a new plan, you never done it before, uh, you may want to just go ahead and roll with the PEO's 401k plan because um, there's a lot of the admin that goes into it. You might have ownership that their contributions outweigh some of the other people. If it's newer, there might be higher wrap fees. There might be other fun fees that you're not aware of. And again, because of the scale, they're generally able to pare down the pricing for you and make it more equitable long term. Again, it really just depends on, you know, how involved and customized you want to get with these items. OK, so we handle the benefits process from start to finish the carrier and plan analysis as plan sponsor and Sparity negotiates contracts and manages vendor relationships to help ensure compliance, cost containment and stability. OK, so this is where Ah, this is where a broker partner can really help you out, um, because a lot of times, you know, you do have sales reps that God bless them. They're great. Um, they can make mistakes in this area. 
And sometimes they don't know the difference between UHC's, you know, Choice Plus and UHC's Select Network. So they might see a plan design that's, you know, oh, it's a thousand dollar deductible and it's three hundred dollars less than yours. We're saving you money. But then all of a sudden you have some of your team that really depends on their insurance a certain way, thinking they're getting one thing. And then all of a sudden, hey, like they're maybe have like a different coverage or their doctor's now out of network and it's a different plan design. So you may run into some issues there. Um, also, I, I really feel like it helps a ton to have a third party neutral person in this scenario give the opinion on the entire cost of insperity benchmarking to what you currently have. So I would say if your broker does partner with Insperity, like, yeah, maybe you want to maybe you want to ask them if they can help you out in this process. You I mean, for us, I mean, we always do what makes sense for the client. I mean, at the end of the day, if the PEO takes it on and we do make some money off of it when we work with the PEO the same way we would as insurance brokers, you know, like the reason why a broker may resist this is because they don't understand the PEO. I mean, to me, it's like if they're going to do all the service, they're going to go ahead and take care of all the things we do as a brokerage, help you stay in compliance. They're going to help you scale, give you all this additional employee service. I mean, it doesn't make sense for us to, um, you know, shy away from that. That's something that could be great for our client. And if our client's happy and they grow, then, you know, God bless them. We may may say, hey, let's let's get you on a PEO. That's the best move. Um, so they do a lot of analysis, but again, I would say that you you do want to potentially work with somebody who knows your current plans intimately if you're benchmarking it. That's why we typically do a PEO audit um, for people before we uh, decide to go with them. Um, now, online access, well-being on demand, healthcare links, 24-7 info, they do a lot to help you pick out your plan designs um, and make sure that they're you know fair and equitable to the company fair and equitable to the employees and that the employees are highly educated and have the resources. Now, as far as making sure that the employees have access to these resources and they know how to do it, the onboarding experience is very important here. That's probably the biggest rollout that you'll want to make in the beginning is you'll want to ask Insperity, hey, what does your implementation process look like? Are you going to be on site? Sometimes your sales rep will join you and they might even throw a pizza party or something like that, right? Because um, it, it, um, it is a big deal to get a, a PEO sale for these folks. Um, there's a lot of money involved because you're not only looking at the health insurance, you're looking at payroll and HR. So sometimes like this move can be, you know, a multi-million dollar move in, um, in, like, in resources. So you'll want to really make sure you understand how we're onboarding and offboarding folks. Healthcare links, getting easy access to, hey, UHC, okay, well, what do I do with UHC? How do I do it? You got a new employee, they're looking at stuff. Maybe their spouse is in there clicking around. They wanna be able to get to stuff very quickly. I think they do a great job of making it easy for people. You'll wanna ask in the demo what the employee experience looks like. The 24 seven info, I mean, yeah, they can make mid-year changes, access cards, telemedicine, all that. I mean, that's pretty standard. The UHC does that no matter you're on, you know, <laughs> you're on Insperity or not. Um, but access to the ID cards, again, you can get on the UHC app. I guess they're saying you can get it on their technology, which is, I guess that's, I guess that's cool. Um, choosing the plan. This is something that's pretty cool. They recently have this little friend, Alex. Alex will ask you a few questions and start pointing you to the right plans. Um, you can generally check formularies, all those different things. You can look at the high deductible plan, HRA plan. You know, HRAs aren't as common, so it's good that they have education here. So if you do decide to do that, you know, you want to ask about what information is going to be presented to your team. Always a good idea to ask them for the presentation ahead of time so that you don't have any surprises. Because if you're expecting one thing and then there's another thing that happens on your open enrollment call, you don't want to be caught off guard. But generally, the Insperity does a good job prepping you for it. Just make sure you're actually attending uh, the implementation calls as you're planning. Okay. So that's that piece. So benefits, overall benefits, I think they're, they do a fine job. If UHC works for you and that's the best carrier, if the pricing makes sense for you, um, after you go through underwriting, phenomenal. Let's go into HR admin and payroll. Okay. So 
when you look at their HR, their admin, their payroll, here's where you're going to want to get a little bit more involved. I, I don't think it's a good idea to go into any service, especially a PEO, without having your own ideas of what is my payroll process? What is my process for time and attendance tracking? What is my process for getting garnishments? How do I do it now? The reason why is when you have some companies that get their time, like say you have hourly employees and you have salaried employees, but your company is, I don't know, an architecture firm and you might allocate for a certain project. Hey, you know, this person's time is worth $47 an hour, but we also need to get those payroll reports, the workers comp cost and all that and show a job costing report to this government entity or whomever it may be, or it might just be the way that your CFO wants to track the finances. You'll want to know that prior to going into this conversation because it becomes very important on how do you take the time and throw it into the payroll system and make it as streamlined and automated as possible. If everybody's all salaried, usually not a big issue. If you're very staunch on breaking certain federal and state labor laws, um, like say you're like, hey, we only pay people monthly, but in that you know state that maybe one employee's in, that classified employee is more semi-monthly every 15 days, well, then it's likely you're not going to be able to pay that employee. Um, but you'll want to bring that up. Potentially, they'll have a, you know, potentially they'll say, hey, you know what? We'll let you do what you want to do with that employee. That's fine. But, you know, you have to sign this, um, you know, waiver or they may have something for you there. That's when you'll want to adopt a process with legal. Again, it's, this is part of why you want to go into the conversation knowing um, your own processes, what works for your company and how you guys manage cash, because all this stuff is coming out at the same time during payroll. Um, that does bring me to another point. The admin fees, the benefits, the workers comp, it's all going to come out, you know, each pay period. Generally, you'll want to check and see with uh, Insperity. Hey, how do you guys collect cash? Um, how do you guys collect payment for all these things? What dates does it come out? If my pay periods are X amount of time, if I have to get rid of an employee and I have to write a paper check, how do we, you know, potentially reconcile that? If there is issues where we either NSF have non-sufficient funds that are pulled because of some issue with billing and payments and timing, what does that look like? Um, you'll want to know that stuff going into these conversations, not just how they work. Reporting. What reports do you need? Right. I mean, really, if they got your people, they know how much you're paying them. The more information and data you put in, generally you can get out. I would say Insperity's reporting is pretty much I mean, I don't know what you what you what they I don't know if there's any reports that you can't do within Insperity because I believe they have report writer. So you can actually create your own report. So they have 50 plus built in ones, custom reports. Really, you're just taking information and in columns, spreading them around and presenting the information. Their technology does fine with that. Um, employee self-service. I mean, they're boasting it as Insperity Premier. I guess that's what they want to call their hub. You have 24 seven access to their employment information. You can get W2s, PTO, all that. You know, that's cool. If you're a small business and you don't have this stuff set up, I mean, it could feel like a pretty big upgrade. Um, but if you're going PEO to PEO, most of them have this. Um, risk management. So with risk management for my California employees, uh, employers, for my companies that have had OSHA issues, for my companies that might have manufacturing or warehouse or MSDS logs, those types of things. This is when you really want to um, lean into the conversation with your sales rep, maybe even have them pull in or, um, one of these risk management uh, reps, because in your service team, if you're in a certain SIC code, you will be assigned someone. Why? Well, because they're also taking on some workers comp risk. So let's see what they got to say workers' compensation and unemployment claims. This is really cool. I'll tell you why. Nobody, unemployment claims, most payroll companies will do that stuff for you. They'll fight, fight it if it's false or they'll approve it if they can look in the payroll record, see what people got paid. Example might be, if you let go of Jim, Jim might claim unemployment and say he made $300,000 a year when he only made $30,000 a year. Could be a mistake, whatever it is. They'll answer the uh, claim on your behalf and make sure that the right number is reported so that they get the proper unemployment claim and you're not paying extra money and your UI rate isn't going up. Really, it's because they don't want theirs to go up either, but um, your standard unemployment insurance will be monitored by them. 
The workers' compensation claim is probably one of the more important pieces because when you do have a claim, it can be very time consuming, laborious, and there will be investigations. Now, it is budget friendly because they're going to provide you people through their workers' comp relationships. Um, I will say that reporting, uh, the reporting piece of it is worth its weight in gold. It's also helpful to have somebody that will advocate for you and for insparity in this uh, case. It, it's honestly, it, it, because of their service level, they may even have, if it's you know dire enough, they may even have somebody go on site. Not every PEO can say that that happens with the workers' comp claims. And we find that aside from just white collar, white collar organizations, Insperity can take on some more blue and gray collar organizations. And part of it is this professional service piece. So this is super helpful. Um, reporting agency interface. I mean, look, if you have DOL audits or you have certain in in things that you need help on, they can help walk you through some of that. Um, I'll let the reps explain more of that for you. Um, you know, hazard and safety review. This, this becomes super important. Um, you can talk more about your industry and in the sales conversation, I would basically really grill them on what is it that they're going to do? What are you going to be responsible for? Generally, you're responsible for one, acting in good faith, right? And protecting your employees. Um, and two, reporting everything proactively that you can to Insperity. So you'll want to talk about what does that communication style look like? Um, as far as like a hazard and safety review and training, I would say absolutely day one, if you have employees that are in the office, invite them to come out if they'll come out or they may even do a virtual walkthrough. Make sure you know what that process looks like and see how quickly you can get some of those deficiencies uh, identified and closed as soon as possible. We'll make the experience of onboarding to a PEO well worth the uh, price of admission, which again, in is not the cheapest one on the block, but you know, when we go through the whole Process of auditing, these are some of the things that are differentiators. I, I'm not big on talking about the differences between everybody, um, mostly because a lot of them do the same things. Not everybody does this part well. Um, Insperity clients have told me that when they've been in you know, situations, they've done this very well. EPLI insurance. So most PEOs, if you're in California and you're in SoCal and you're in either Orange County, LA County, or Ventura County, as an example, an EPLI policy might be between $150,000 to $250,000 for a deductible, you might not even be able to get it. With their EPLI policy, you're going to want to know for California specifically, what's the deductible? If you're headquartered in any other state, it's generally about the same. I'll let them update you on that in your sales process because um, you know it is subject to change. They do renew their policies. They make different negotiations. So you, you do want to understand the EPLI policy. Also, you want to know is, um, hey, if there is a claim, does your insurance policy come first? If you don't have one, will they cover it? Do you have to have some EPLI policy in front of that? Does it go to your, how do you, like, how does it actually happen if you go through a claim? Make them walk you through that and then also see what are some reasons why they may or may not back you up on discrimination, workplace torts, or any of these other claims, um, or especially wrongful termination. Employee relations. So, they can help you out with interviewing, all this stuff. When you look at this, these are typically like, you know, they might be a la carte or additional fees. So you'll want to ask questions around that. Some of the stuff like the handbooks, yeah, they're going to do it. But there might be certain pieces in here like liability management training, all this. It might not be included in the package you're looking at because not everybody needs it. So, again, you're going to want to ask them questions about that. EEOC services, they look like equal opportunity, um, you know, commission is... You want to make sure that you have the proper reporting in there. Um, some companies don't need to report into the EEOC due to their size. Some do. Um, I think because, you know, the PEO does manage thousands and thousands of people, they're going to advocate that you do it as a best practice. Um, but you can also lean on them to give you that information. So that's pretty good. Um, you know, we won't get into um, too much of the techno HR technology. I think you saved that for the demo. I think it is important to go through a demonstration, but when you're looking at PEOs, especially multiple PEOs, I think it's first. it first makes the most sense to look at pricing of the insurance policies, seeing if you even qualify for that. If that is a big driver for you, then you're going to want to know that before you go ahead and spend an hour and a half on a demo. Um, Insperity's uh, process, again, is quite laborious at times. You do have to go through a big risk assessment. 
They're going to want three to five years of loss runs. They're going to want to see all your different policies. And for good reason, because they are taking on a lot of risk. They are going to roll up their sleeves and do a lot of things that some of these other PEOs don't. Um, so again, they're not the cheapest ones on the block, but they do have the best professional services um, that we've seen from a lot of different companies and we get pretty good reviews on them. Last thing I'll say is the talent management piece. This is where you want to talk to your sales team about this. Um, recruiting services, um, they do that. Compensation services, they'll build out compensation programs for you. These are some of the things where you might have some a la carte items that you have to pay for or anything additional. I would say that, again, this is something you want to talk to the sales team about and ask more specific questions if you're interested in it. Um, you know, at least in our client's case, we usually already know what their compensation plan is. You usually want to build this with your HR team and your CFO and figure out what behaviors do we need to drive in the business in order to create a compensation plan that mirrors those behaviors, right? Um, if you're not giving away a ton of equity anymore in your company, because you guys are a little further down the line, it might make a ton of sense to change the comp plan in a way where you're incentivizing behaviors. If you have the cash to front um, and pay people higher commissions, let's say on the sales versus giving people equity, then it might make sense to play around with those comp models and see what you can do. But that will um, lead us into performance management support. You're going to want to know, hey, if we're compensating people off of bonuses and they're based off of reviews, that's a very fine line to walk. You want to make sure you don't have people um, that are saying, hey, you know what? I feel like this employee just is more a culture fit. Well, what does that really mean? Is it because he looks like you, smells like you or has some of the same experiences? You'll want to make sure that you're running that through a third party and they'll be super helpful. Training and development. I mean, look, it's very simple to take a company of 10 people and go from a C culture to a B culture to an A culture with 10 people. But when you get to about 150, all these things start to matter. You're going to want to take the reports. You're going to want to take the information that you see here and take those facts and figure out, well, what does that say about how we operated in the past? And what is that going to look like if we want to change some of these metrics in the future? And Sparity can help you out with that because their HR business partners are not only working on your account, but also other accounts in your industry. They also have layers and layers of management and team and people all across the country that they can go through and say, hey, has anybody ran into somebody that, you know, has worked like this? I'll tell you, um, some of our clients that have, um, you know, employees in California, um, you know, our rep is located in California. But when we work with people in Florida or New York or any other state, they loop in their teammates from that area and say, hey, here's how we see people using Insperity in this very neighborhood. And that's been super helpful because, um, you know, it, it is good to be able to ask other people, well, what are they doing that's working on this platform? How are they choosing the plans? What are some things maybe, you know, you and the HQ at HR um, for the company may not know that that boots on the ground rep at Insperity can know. So you can start to see what it feels like to have that type of support. Um, but you know what, in terms of this video, right, um, there is other e-learning. There's tons of stuff to go through on here with Insperity. This was really a high level overview. That should really, the questions we went through should help you get started on your journey and seeing if Insperity is the right PEO for you. Um, again, our team is more than happy to do a benefit strategy meeting with you and see if Insperity is the right PEO for you. We're also able to negotiate your pricing, your insurance, and make sure that you are truly getting the best solution for your company. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to speak with you. Take care and best of luck on your journey.